Hey, welcome to Viewers, Views and Cues. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Right, this is the first time we've done this, but if you like it, we'll do it every Monday. What happens is you guys comment. Thank you so much for all the comments mm. you leave on the videos. It's awesome. Um, Dan and I spend an inordinate amount of time answering those comments. Uh, so we thought, why not do it in video form? Yeah. And uh, see what we can learn. So we're going to do it. And if you like it, we'll keep doing it. Great. OK. Uh, here we go. The Holy Moly says, great episode. But the words tube screamer weren't uttered once. So does this really qualify as a TPS episode? <laughs> no, of course it doesn't. He's talking about the Devin Townsend uh, <laughs> episode, by the way. OK. Uh, Cody MBB and Francesco Panzera and Deet Colligan, Daniel Aganda, a lot of people want to know this, and Relative Gains, which I think is a great name for, 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 uh, for uh, a YouTube commenter, all want to know, what was the pedal Dev was using for his metal tone? It's the Maple Leaf by Alex K Production. Uh, you couldn't quite see it because the reflection from the lights, uh, but it's a wonderful, very heavy Devi type tone. But he was also juicing that every now and then um, with the pork loin from way huge. Uh, way huge. If you ever don't know what something is, it's all the pedals are always listed in the description text at the bottom of the video. Ryan Rowlandson, among others, says, wasn't Ocean Machine recorded in 1997? Yes, it was. Dan was so excited, he got his chronology <clears throat> a little bit back to front. Uh, so I was so excited. Um, Yes, Ocean Machine was recorded in 1997. There was Ocean Machine Live that was released ah. this year in 2018. The thing with Dev, you've got Devon Townsend Project, Devon Townsend Band, Devon Townsend. Then you've got um, uh, Casualties of Cool with his new thing. Uh, so it's quite a number of things he's involved yeah, yeah, yeah. in. Go but, on Wikipedia. Um, uh, yes. Peter Spencer Smith asks, where does Dan get his shoes? <laughs> uh, my wife gets my shoes. What, what shoes were you wearing that day? Just the black. Boots, I okay, think. black boots. Yeah, yeah. Any idea where they're from? Uh, probably, um, what's that place that you like? That has everything. TK Maxx. TK Maxx. Ah, in the states it's called TJ Maxx. Okay. If anyone uh, is confused. About right there that. you go. George Patterson asks, "What's the blonde amp on the floor directly behind Devon and Dan?" Um, again, George. Uh, all the information is in the description below, but that is a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, and it would have been some special edition version thereof. Um, we will explain this a bit more in a second, but Dev is running the Hot Rod Deluxe dry and the Axe Effects left and right wet. So it's a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Oddball1973, uh, you sound g great, uh, wants to know what make is Devin's wah pedal? Uh, it's a CAE Custom Audio wah. Made by Dunlop. Made by Dunlop, yeah. They're mm. wonderful, by Dual the way. inductor, it's called. Okay, um, Grant Firstat, among others, was intrigued by Devin's uh, synths... Synth synesthesia. Synesthesia. I didn't know anything about synesthesia until he mentioned it, until Dev mentioned it. I went on Wikipedia and read about it, which is what you should do. It's where um, I'm going to reduce this and get it wrong, so please read Wikipedia. It's basically where your senses are confused. So things that you might normally perceive as sight, you might smell or hear. So it's your senses... Um, encoding and decoding things in in a different way that's incredible okay how, how bonkers wow but it's a thing it's a real thing it's not just made up mike martin quite rightly says 24 dis dislikes away with you you smelly vermin nice nice uh chase douglas would like to see a simon rig special simon no <laughs> Actually, we do have Simon's board here today. Yeah. I'm going to give it a little bit of TLC, and then we are going to put it up on Instagram. Marcus Covisto, Marcus Covisto. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Does anyone else find ambient music really boring to listen to? <laughs> Everyone finds all music boring to listen to yeah, if you yeah. find the wrong person. It's just, um, it's just good and bad, man. It's just good and bad. Okay, music for airports. And I cannot believe I've forgotten his name. It's an amazing album. Um, Brian Eno. Brian Eno. Oh, what's wrong with my brain? But you. But <laughs> That's a great question. It's a great. But, what's wrong with Dan's Dan's brain? There is a view of views and cues that could go on for four days. I got a message this week. No tangents, Dan. Come on. <laughs> this needs to be 10 minutes long. Sorry. Your turn. Okay. Rob Townley. Hey, Rob. I can't uh, answer. Is this. the Ocean Machine in the G2 stereo loop? Um, and. Stromson's asked, how does the Ocean Machine work with the MIDI capabilities of G2? Uh, the. The Ocean Machine isn't in a, a stereo leverage G2. He's only using it in, in mono because what he's doing, he's feeding the same signal from the Ocean Machine to the amplifier 
and then when he wants to, to the XFX, and when he wants to feed the same um, signal, that goes through to his laptop, um, which is running Alberton Live. Um, is that right? Alberton? Ableton. Ableton. Alberton's for the elder folks. Yeah. <laughs> Where does the dry split happen? It's one of the one of the mono loops, and actually it gets changed a lot. Okay. Depending on what how Dev's using it. So, uh, in one in one sound, the the humdinger will be after the drives, and the drives are just going to the Hot Rod Deluxe, and all the you know the the delay line and everything is going to the Axe Effects. In another one, the uh, the humdinger gets put after. The delay, so and everything you, you is can going do to... that because with the latest software on G two, you can move the position of any of the mono loops. Right? That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. Yeah. As far as the uh, the MIDI capabilities of G two, G two is just sending out um, MIDI program messages, um, so that when uh, Dev has certain sounds set up for certain songs, he can just program the the um, Ocean Machine to recall that sound when he goes to that particular. So it does work with G two MIDI. Yeah. The, the thing with the Ocean Machine as well, and loads of people have commented on the Ocean Machine, because, it, it, you know, when I first got it, I'm like, okay, it's really cool. It's got a couple of delays and reverb, but seeing how Dev uses it, yeah, yeah. you know, and, it, and it's, it's, you know, it's incredible. But to use it like that, you have to have access to its controls. Yeah. You know, so... It's like somebody giving me a saxophone. I know what it does. Sure, but there you go. I've literally no idea how to make it do that. Yeah. Actually, it's even worse than that. It's like somebody giving me an instrument that hasn't been invented yet. Right. And I don't know what it does, and I don't know how to use it. There you go. That's what it's like. <laughs> um, so related to that, Pi R squared is interested in how Dev implements Ableton Live in his setup, because Pi R squared uh, also does this and just runs the board into Ableton. So Ableton is actually at the... What is Ableton? Okay, it's a... It's like a... It's a sequencer, right? Yeah, but it, it also includes... You can record things on it, and, you know, it's all... It's very clever. Um, but what Dev does, he has one of the outputs. So there's three outputs in, in his rig. One output goes to the amp, one output goes to the Axe Effects, and one output goes to Alberton. Ableton. Alberton. Uh, just, Alberton, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I have dubbed the Alberton. Okay, it's Alberton from this moment <laughs> on. Alberton Live. If you imagine those soundscapes that he is creating, now imagine that then going to Alberton. He records <laughs> Mapleton. that. Mapleton. Mapleton. <laughs> And he records that, and then he switches the input because he's got three inputs as well, one from his guitar, one from his microphone, and one from Alberton. And then, so he's recorded that, and then he sends the same signal back into his, his delay line and just, it, you know, it's I, very, very clever. I stopped listening as I started asking the question, I'm afraid. Siawa asks, what is Devon's alternate tuning? I could not believe to? this. Okay. I could not believe this. So... Devon, it's basically, he has, he, his guitars are tuned to C and B, but in the same intervals as if you were playing in Dadgad, but drop down a whole tone. Dadgad was down a, a minor third. Uh, is an alternate tuning, as Dan mentioned, D-A-D, G-A-D, which mm -hmm. has been used quite a lot. It gets used in folk music a lot, and Jimmy Page used it as well. T-Hawk, I liked your skateboarding games, is confused about the flashing LED on Devin's Echoplex pedal. Apparently it flashes in time. Is that a version two thing? Dan checked this this morning. Yeah, uh, it must be. I can't find any information on it, but it must be a, um, a new released version. Owls doesn't do it. Yeah. When you tap the tempo in, it just the LED stays That's on. That's the so. Dunlop Echoplex pedal, uh, EP 103 maybe. Ooh. Uh, Wolves and Guitars writes in capitals, mind you, so yep. he's virtually shouting at us. 44 minutes with Devi. That's it. You all did an hour on acoustics. Then he laughs. Ha ha ha. Enjoyed it very much. Thanks. Thanks, Wolves and Guitars. There you go. You sound great too. Those were the, the main questions on Devi. Uh, and just to finish off some other random stuff from other videos, because obviously we get tons of comments on all videos. So Francisco Fronza wants to know, where does the vent and chorus come on mixed board? Is it before or after the drives? Um, all after. Vent. I put last because I figure it's a uh, rotating speaker simulation, therefore it needs to be last. Mm -hmm. Chorus, some people like it before, some people like it after. I like it after. It comes after for two reasons. One, because I like the sound of it. Two, because I split the signal wet dry. The chorus only goes to one amp, so it only comes after the split, so I put it after the drives. Right. Randall Davis asks, how do you document pedal settings so you can recreate the sound later? 
Uh, the answer to this is no. You get to know your pedals and you get to know how they sound. But the, the great thing about pedals is that depending on the room, the guitars, the amps and things that you play, you tweak them. Andrew Locke, is it just me? There are times when you pick up your favorite guitar and you wish you'd stayed in bed. <laughs> Then you pull it out one day with no expectations and the guitar does what's in your head and more and you actually feel impressed with yourself. It happens to me a lot and I wondered if it happens to the pros too. Uh, not sure about pros, but yes. Yeah, of 100%. course. Yeah, yeah. BC wants to know the Thorpey Warthog or the T-Rex Money. Uh, T-Rex Mud Honey. I only have money for one. I'd be, I'd be happy with either. If we're talking the standard... Mud Honey to Far East Production Thorpey. Yeah, I'd go Thorpey. If we're talking the Danish Mud Honey, the handmade, one. I'd be almost equally happy. The reason I choose the Thorpey, the range of almost clean to really crazy fuzz, you can have any yep. at any volume. And finally, Mike Seal says of our four types of booster pedal from years ago, uh, guys, this information is really great, but there's way too much filler. I would try to get to the point more quickly, stay on point and consolidate these videos so they could be shorter in length. The first almost four minutes could be cut, and then over the course of the video, there's a lot of wasted talk time. A lot of wasted, a talk, lot of time. wasted talk time. So down. much wasted talk time. This could and should be 15 minutes long. Now, I think this raises an interesting existential point. It really does. Uh, thank you, Mike, uh, for asking that. And this you know, something that has been brought up before. Um, you know, first of all, let's talk about boosts. Yeah. Um, and I think, the, the point is, there are so many different sorts of boosters available and each one has its own character and depending on... So, you know, when you start going down the road of, all right, you've got this type of booster, you know, boosters A, B, C and D. Mm. Soon after that, I got the mini one, or at least when the mini one came out, I got that one. Right. Which had less options on it. Sure. And then I started to realise that different boosts sound different. But mm -hmm. it wasn't until I met you that we started going through... I haven't actually had breakfast this morning because I was in Barcelona yesterday and I didn't get back till 2 a.m. Right. And um, our flight was delayed out right. of Barcelona to Gatwick because interestingly, in Barcelona, they have three runways. I took Joe Landreth <laughs> to Barcelona a awesome. few years. Yeah, yeah. I took him to see Biffy Clyro. He was... <laughs> so... <laughs> so... He, he was... Over.